Hey guys, today we're out game fishing and today's Tech Talk is all about making a skipping bait for marlin. Using a skipping bait for a marlin is a fantastic way of fishing. It's really visual, you get good aggressive bite and it's actually a really economical way of fishing. Uh, it's a proven technique that's been used for many, many years and, uh, and now with the modern way of fishing with dredges and teasers, um, having a skipping bait uh, is a really good way to um, you know, switch those uh, fish off the teasers and dredges. So um, earlier on, we got our jack mackerel. This is our preferred uh, skipping bait, and we're gonna rig it up. What we've got, got a fluorocarbon leader, around about 220 pound, uh, inline circle hook. We like to use circle hooks when uh, bait fishing for marlin, so we get a really good hook up rate. Uh, and also, if we wanna release the fish, uh, we know that that uh, hook's gonna be in the corner of the mouth. Uh, we've got a good pair of uh, cutters. We've got a little plastic tube here that we're going to use, and that's used for um, getting some separation between the nose of the bait and the circle hook, so we get a good clean hookup rate. And uh, a rigging needle, and uh, um, our rigging floss. Okay. So the preparation of the bait's really simple. Uh, we're going to cut off the uh, pectoral fins. This makes the uh, allows the bait to swim a lot easier. And then we're going to get a, do a, cut a small nick in the nose of the bait and we'll, when we're getting to the final stages this uh, it, uh, makes the toe point in the centre of the nose of the bait so we're just going to put a little nick in there in the centre of the nose and there we go. With a swimming bait you don't have to take the, the gut cavity out of it, you don't have to take the eyes out, um, you don't have to be worried about the air inside the gut cavity okay so it's just a natural fish. We've removed the pectoral fins and we've put that little nick in the uh, front of the nose there. We've got our rigging floss, take off about 1.2 metres of our rigging floss. Let's see, use our cutters to cut it. And then we're going to get our needle and thread our floss through the, uh, the eye of it. I did a little twist when I put it through just so it holds that um, rigging floss on there. So what we're going to do, our first in, in, insertion is around about just above the spine and we're going to push that through. You can see there it's just going through the spine so it's going to be nice and tight. We're going to pull that floss through, pull it about halfway so we've got even line. The next point that we're going to go in is we're going to go in the back of the gill plate and come out on the other side on the back of the gill plate. And what this does is lock off the gill plate so uh, this swims a lot better. And the next one is we're going to put it through the top of the eyes. Okay, pull it through. Okay, we're then going to take that tag end off the uh, needle and work on the other side. So. So what we're going to do is we've got the line coming out that side, we're going to roll it over and go through the same place we went out on the gills. And the, the purpose of this is we're actually trying to, we're trying to get a nice zigzag pattern so we get a nice even pull with the line, but it also makes it a lot stronger and that, that um, bait can take a couple of hits. So the next step is actually uh, putting the needle back through where the uh, line is coming out on the eye cavity there. So the, we're going back through the opposite way. And now you can see we've got that nice crisscross pattern. Uh, so it's going to give us a nice even pull on our bait. We're then going to pull this and secure this so it's nice and tight on the top of the head. What we do is we just do an, an overhand knot there, pull that line both through, pull it up. And then the good thing about this wax thread is we can now pull this nice and even onto the top of the head and then that's nice and secure so we've got it it's nice and strong everything's all closed off we're then going to put the needle back on again go back through the eye cavity one on that side we're going to do it the opposite way on the other side And then what we're going to do now is we're going to form an overhand knot on the bottom of the gill plate 
And what this does is just close off the gut cavity and prevent it from opening up and making this bait spin or not swim very well. So we're going to tie that off there. Another overhand knot. So now we've got the gill plates all closed off. We've got uh, multiple stitches crisscross, so it's nice and straight and uh, it's super strong. So it's going to be able to take a few whacks. So now we've got one. We've got one of these toe points is in the correct position for when we secure this hook on the front. But what we want to do is we're going to get the one of the tag ends, and I always go behind the back of the knot, and this prevents it rolling forward. And we're going to go up through the middle and up through the center of the head. Okay, so that's coming through. And now we've got a line coming out each side. And we can then tie a knot and we're going to secure that on the front. And that's why we put that little cut in there originally. So this will pull down nice and tight into that slot. Another overhand knot. There we go, we've got that all nice and secure on the nose. We'll do another one more knot to lock it off. Okay, put one more in there for good luck. Okay, so now we've got a good toe point in the center. We can cut our tag line so they're the same length. What I like to do is then roll these up so they're nice and uh, you know nice and tight. And then we're going to get our little pipe. We're going to put our floss through there, pulling it down, and then that's going to be our spacer for when we um, put our circle hook on there. Another overhand knot. We're going to do two overhand knots on here. So that's the first one. Pull it tight. Do one more. Through. Down. There we go. So we've now got our spacer tube there. We're going to put another overhand knot on there. But we're not going to do it up. This is where we're going to put our circle hook on. So we've got a, a gap in there. We make it, we've got a loop in there. We can put the hook in. We're going to pull that up nice and tight. We're going to do another overhand knot. And then what I like to do is go around and come out back at the other side there. Come through the other side. Another overhand knot. On the opposite side. We get our good cutters here, cut that off. There you go. That's one skipping bait for a marlin.